I, the Lord gave me this message a few weeks ago. Just drop this, this little word in my spirit. And here's the definition of the word boom. It means to grow, to develop, to progress rapidly, to flourish, advance, increase, expand, resound. One definition was reverberate, strengthen. See, your life can grow, you can flourish, you can advance, you can expand. See, there is a sound to your life that is reverberating to others that you are around. Those that you work with, what sound do they hear coming from your life? Those that you live with, what sound do they hear coming from your life? Those that you go to church with, what sound do they hear coming from your life? We all have a sound. And our sound reverberates around us. Now, when you look at those words, I know that sometimes you get frustrated in your life and, and, and sometimes you may slip and use a four-letter word. None of y'all, the first service, they were here. None of y'all would ever do that. I, knew that. I told them first service, it was just them and the Christians would be here the second service. So that's, that's who's here in the house today. So, but I, I told them, you know, when, when you want to curse your finances or, you know, something's not going your way and you, you, you know, you might want to say, boom it instead of. Reverse the curse. Instead of cursing your finances and cursing your kids, why don't you say boom to them and say, grow, exp expand, flourish, develop, advance. Just that, see, so you get a life tip every time you come to Metro Tab. That's your life tip. Today, your life tip is boom it. Uh, that'll be hashtagged and tweeted all over this country, and they'll go, what are they doing in that church? They just should be here. Boom can always also be used as an exclamation to reinforce a point or statement. Have you ever, you know, you ever heard somebody called out, and they just got what they deserve, and you just go, boom, eat that. <laughs> now, in the first service, just me and this saint over here on the front row because she's here working on the Dream Team both services today. We were the only ones in the house that agreed that we liked every now and then to go eat that. The rest of the Christians didn't do any of that. But it's also an exclamation to reinforce a point of statement. So when I say God's got it, he does. His word is true. That's just it. There's just some boom statements in your life. So can anybody look at your life and just say, I can follow that. Or are they going, so y'all are good. You are good. Y'all ate your Wheaties this morning for breakfast. First crowd didn't do that so good. So let's look at the word boom in honor of my mother because she taught me how to do this. We're going to do an acronym today. The B stands for believe regardless. So you have to adopt a position in life that no matter what is thrown your way, no matter what curve is sent to you, no matter what wave slaps you, no matter who walks out, who walks in, you believe regardless. No matter what the report is, you believe regardless. I found some nuggets in his word. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, if you can pray for anything and if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. It's pretty simple, isn't it? It's a simple formula. He just says you can pray for anything that you need in your life. And if you believe that you have received it, and notice that's past tense, you received it. Not you will receive, not it's going to happen three days from now or, or five years from now. You know, I'm tired of saying your breakthrough is coming. No, my breakthrough is here. I don't want anything else to come in the future. Coming is always belayed, delayed. It's here now. You can pray for anything, and if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. Here's another nugget that I found. You need to read his word. It's, it's a very interesting book. Proverbs 28, 9 says, God has no use for the prayers of the people who won't listen to him. Interesting things you find when you go searching in his word. So, you know, there are people who say, well, God don't answer my prayers. Just put Proverbs 28 9 on a sticky note, you know, on their desk, in their car seat. Don't do that, please. 
just, just think in your head the next time somebody like, no, God don't answer my prayers. Well, you want to say, well, are you listening to him? Go back to the last time that you obeyed him. The last time he told you to do something, did you do it? You're probably still in the same class trying to pass the same test. I tell you all the time, you can cheat. It's open book. Open the book. The answers are there. Highlight them. Here's another nugget. Proverbs 20 verse 7 says, God loyal people living honest lives make it much easier for their children. See, we can do all kinds of teaching on generational curses and stuff that comes out of our, our lineage, you know, pass down all the junk. You know, if, you, if your great granddad is an alcoholic, your granddaddy is, and you're going to be one. You don't have to be one. See, a God-loyal person who lives an honest life has the power in Jesus Christ to take an eraser and start erasing the lines of junk. Your kids do not have to deal with the same insanity that you had to deal with because we have the power to change it for those who are walking behind us. So you choose to believe regardless. Then we have to learn to overcome the enemy. You know, there is an enemy to your soul. There is an agenda against your, do you understand that? There's an agenda against you. When you were born in this world, you were placed in the current of life. The current is coming this way and we're trying to go this way. The media is coming this way and we're saying, no, it ain't. So you, you're born fighting. See, you come through a thing called labor and delivery. And when you are, you know, I was there just a few hours ago when Miguel Stone Goins was born. And I hope she was supposed to be here today. If you're watching via the internet today, Naomi, I am ready to see you now in church. <laughs> I love you. But I was there when Miguel came into this world. And it was just as tough on him. Now, it's not tough on Emma because she was built for having babies. Just, if you want to take a lesson, get in the, get in the birth room with that girl. Not all of them have been that way. But it's tough what we, are, what, we, what we force ourselves down through to get in this thing called life. Then we get slapped, so we take our first breath. We, we're taken out of this warm, you know, fuzzy environment where we have been fed and nourished, and we're placed under hot lights. They start poking us, sticking us with needles, putting black stuff on our feet to get our footprints. So our daddy can be happy that we had a footprint. You know, all of a sudden, you, and, and they start learning quickly to overcome the enemy. By what? Screaming. <laughs> it's like, get out of my face. So sometimes you got to overcome the enemy. James 4 verses 7 through 10, chapter 4. I encourage you not to read James unless you're strong. If you want a life lesson and you want to grow it up real quick, quick, get in the book of James. He is a very irritational speaker. He is not inspirational at all. He says here, let God work his will in you. Now, one translation says, resist the devil and he will flee. This one says, let God work his will in you. Yell aloud no to the devil and watch him run. Say a quiet yes to God and he'll be there in no time. Here's what he says. Quit dabbling in sin. Quit playing. Purify your inner life. The person that you are when your family goes to bed and you're on the computer by yourself. See, I'm trying to inspire you, not irritate you. I'm sorry. Then he says, get serious. Get down on your knees before the master. It's the only way you'll get on your feet. See, so we wonder why that we seem to lap the same mountain in our lives over and over again, fight the same battles, can never go to a different place of living. This is why. You got to first let God work his will in you. You have to say an absolute, unequivocal no to the agenda of evil. Sometimes you gotta convince the enemy that you're telling him no. Now it says you don't have to convince God. All you gotta do is say a quiet yes to him and he'll be there. So get on your knees to get on your feet is what that basically is saying. So you believe regardless. 
That was sick. You believe regardless. See, you're watching your cell phones and stuff now. You overcome the enemy. You overlook people. Because there's our problem. Believing God is not tough. We know who the enemy is, but those people that we put in our lives, some of the ones we're born to, some people that we work next to, people we go to church with. I didn't tell you to say boom, see? It's like Simon says. Here's some, some, some additional nuggets I found. You need to get in his word. Proverbs 19, 3 says, people ruin their lives by their own stupidity. So why does God always get blamed? Have they ever just, I, we, in ministry we hear it all the time. Well, God told me. I'm like, he told you What? Have you opened his word? And can you find that stupidity in his word anywhere? But see, we as Christians like to spiritualize. I've prayed about this and God told me to marry that unbeliever. No, he didn't. I'm trying to inspire you now, not irritate you. He didn't, baby. And see, women are the world's worst. Because we love change, we love a project, and we just think, I'll get that man and I can change him. Baby, if God can't change him, you don't have a snowball's chance in hell. Another. And we think we can. See, we date, you know, now we meet on the internet. And we go meet in, you know, Illinois for the weekend. And think we know them. Baby, anybody can be good on a candlelight dinner night when you're blowing your breath down their neck. See, they're getting sweet funnies on the front row over here already. But you need to hang out with them just a little longer. Like maybe a year. You know, you need to meet who they came from. Because, you know, I got a good looking mama. Stand up, baby girl. I want you to look at my mama. She's hot. <laughs> Steve Ball married good. And he has a good looking mama. I married good. You better check out where they came from. They don't fall far from the tree. You'll see your future. So you need to go meet the parents. You know, and, and we, we make these crazy decisions. And then, then we're like, God, why? Well, he just looks back and you say, baby, you did it. You did this, baby. I didn't do this. Now, he's kind and gracious to help us get out of these messes sometimes. Sometimes he'll just let you stay there and wallow in your mess. So we ruin our lives by our own lack of judgment, by our own lack of wisdom, our own lack of balance, our own lack of patience. We start trying to work it out because God needs some help working it out. And he really doesn't. You know, I just believe, you know, we've had women who have, women are good. They, they, they church hop like they bar hop. Christian women don't go to the bars. They go to churches to find a man. And we've had some that have come through here in seasons and they will go to Abba's house. Then they go to Silverdale. Looking for a man. I just believe that the God who stepped out on nothing and created a world from nothing with his own very own words knows where you live, knows where you're, what your address is, knows where you work, knows where you go to church, and when it is time for that person to walk into your life, you don't have to be at the right college or on the right job. You will meet that person. 
if he can, yeah, boom, boom. If, if he can say, if he can say, let there be light, then he can look at your life and say, okay, boom, it's time now. I'm just simple like that. I just believe that. You know, now we have laughed at Brittany and Brian. They're probably watching via the internet right now. My son-in-law and my daughter-in-law were in relationship for 10 years in this church. Bob, when they started this adoption process in Honduras, they could have been married 10 years. We could have already had Josiah home. Boom. Brian. Boom. Brittany. But it wasn't God's time. They were best friends. Thought they'd never be married. Now they're living in Honduras together. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> Boom is right. I found another little thing here. Proverbs 19, 24 says, some people dig a fork into the pie, but are too lazy to raise it to their mouth. Wow. See, I'm trying to be inspirational, Devin. I just find those scriptures that are not inspirational. Have you ever met that person? Do you work with them? Do they live in your house? They're 24 years old, living at your house, don't have a job yet, driving your car, living on your insurance, eating your groceries. No, they're 35 now, still living there. If I had to do over, I'd probably leave my parents longer too because it was a great home. They paid the house payment, they, they bought the cars, paid for the insurance. I mean, hey, I was stupid for leaving. Because when you leave and you become an adult, you got to pay the cable bill. It's, it's, it's really, it's wrong. You got to pay the internet bill. You know, you got to pay your power bill. It's just not fun. So it's much more fun to let daddy pay all that and drive his car. <laughs> you know, dad would say, you got, you're welcome to come home, baby. And there was some season. I'm like, yeah, we're ready to come home, daddy. But see, you may know this person that they feel entitled. They want you to kill for them and bring the food home. You know, and you find these people in the church world because there's not a pastor alive that has not had one person send them a little note, send them a little word. We're leaving because we're not being fed, Pastor Bergner. I learned a long time ago, it's not the food that you receive in this house that sustains you. It's what you digest into your system. Because you could attend church here every Sunday, every Thursday, every special event. But if you don't take a fork, dig it in, put it in your mouth and digest it into who you are, it doesn't change you. The truth that you know, the truth doesn't set you free. Because there's people who, that there are truth around them and they're in bondage. It's the truth that you know that sets you free. The truth that you put into your life that sets you free. Proverbs 21, 29 says, unscrupulous people fake it a lot. Honest people are sure of their steps. See, do you have any of those people in your life that it's called smoke and mirrors? It looks so good in their life. And you think, here I am serving God. I'm paying my tithes. I'm giving my offerings. And life stinks right now. I'm struggling. But look at John. You know, he's got the big pontoon boat and three, you know, Lincoln sitting in his driveway. Got a big old fine new house. But check out John's credit debt. Because you know where he works and you know the average salary where he works. But see, unscrupulous people on Facebook make you think their life is all that in a bag of chips. And if you don't watch this stupid social media stuff we got going on right now, it's a great tool, but it is crazy insane sometimes. Because you'll lay in your bed at night and you'll open up your phone and you'll scroll down through your little friends who are not really your friends and half who, half who are your friends on Facebook don't even know your name would not come to you and change your diaper if you were paraplegic. Those are your friends. Sorry, trying to be inspirational. But you start scrolling down and, you know, they, they show you a picture. They've been here and they've been doing this. It's all a bunch of smoke and mirrors, baby. It's just smoke and mirrors. Because when you get close, because see, the person who has to talk the loudest about their life, 
ease up to their, their life window and pull the curtains back just an inch or two and look into the chaos that's really going on. The person that, that's at your job that has to talk about how big their house is, how good they got it, it's a smoke and mirrors show, baby. Because those who've really got a good life, I have to say it, people know it. If you walk in authority, you don't have to, you don't have to carry, you know, you don't have to carry no big stick and, and, and these people with their titles, you know, I'm bishop so-and-so, I'm like, really bishop of what? What you bishop over? There's bishops. A bishop is over other pastors, not over people like you. Sheep, that's a pastor. You know, it, I'm apostle so-and-so, I'm prophetess. I don't want to be none of that. I want to be Rita who loves God. Who he smiles down on me and says, hey, there's my daughter in whom I am well pleased. If you got a title, people know it. You don't have to tell them. It's crazy. See, there's lots of smoke and mirrors that go along and you've got to just, just get through all of that hazy stuff and figure out that you're gonna be an honest person and you know, the Bible says he orders your steps. So you gotta believe regardless, you gotta overcome the enemy, you have to overlook people, then you gotta magnify Christ, which means take the limits off of your life. So you can't make Christ any bigger. He is all there is. We can't enlarge Christ, but we can enlarge our lives so he can get bigger inside of us. Psalm 119, 32 says, I will pursue your commands because when I do, you expand my understanding. The Bible says in another location to pray for wisdom and he'll make you wise. Pray for balance and you'll be balanced. Pray that he helps you process and you'll learn how to process. See, the, our biggest problem today is we don't know how to process life. We're bounced to and fro, up and down like a roller coaster of emotions. You've got to learn to stop, take a breath and breathe and step back and assess the situation. Because we get caught up in this turmoil called life. He said, she said, they said, who's they? Always qualify, baby. Who's they? When Mike comes to me and says, they say, well, Mike, who's they? You know who's they's going to be in his life? Stephanie. Stephanie. He ain't got no 4,200 days behind him talking about me. It's them two. When you back it up and you process, then they, usually their aunt, their uncle, nobody who really cares a flying flip about you. So if you pursue his commands and you pursue his lifestyle, he expands the way you think. He expands your revelation. He expands your understanding. I like this one. Isaiah 54, 2 says, enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home and spare no expense. Now, it's face value. In one translation, it talks about taking up your tent stakes and expanding them to larger. Now, I'm not a tent dwelling girl. Now, some of you guys are Lakers. I understand that. You love the lake and you go to the tents for a while, but you come home to your house. I watch you on Facebook. You know, I'm here with the bugs for 32 hours, but I'm going home. So y'all can do the bugs. I don't like lakes. I don't like oceans. I like to go to the ocean, but I'm not going way out where the boats are. You know, um, and when it comes to lakes, I like mine to have concrete on the bottom of them so I can see what boogers are in the water with me. Because there's some boogers in those lakes and there's some boogers in that ocean. And you know there are, you know. Okay, who was the woman? Was she from here in Chattanooga that did the, the shark stuff? That video was hilarious. She's pretty wise. Stay out the shark's house and you won't get bit. There you go. That's good teaching. Why don't y'all make a video so our church can go viral? That'd be good. But make sure it's good. Please pass it before us before you put it on Facebook. <laughs> I don't want to go viral for the wrong reason. <laughs> but this translation says enlarge your house, build an addition. So let's talk, not talk about your physical house, but your, your emotional house, your spiritual house, your financial house. You enlarge your capacity for living. You enlarge your capacity for processing life. You build an additional, you build additional rooms in your mind so Christ can dwell those rooms. You build rooms like, I know I can do this. You build rooms like, he has never failed me a room. So when you get in trouble, you run to the room that he has never failed me and you start inhabiting, you build an addition into your life. Then you spread out your home. In other words, you spread out your influence. You spread out 
You build your reputation. You build your character. You build your integrity. You build the person that you are. Then you can spread out your influence and you can teach somebody how to do life better. And it says spare no expense, which means you have to be a giver. You have to be generous with who you are and who you are to other people. Psalm 118 verse 5 says, In tight circumstances, I cried out to the Lord. And he answered me in wide open spaces. Let me show you. Mike, come stand right here. I need the whole front row to get around him real tight where he can't breathe. Oh, Ben, you'll be a good one because you'll be a good roadblock right in front of him. You and your skinny self. Oh, they will be good too. Like, yeah, just get right up there where he can't breathe. <laughs> tight places, like tight. Okay, I won't ask what y'all are doing. This church is wild. <laughs> this church is not good. Y'all are too free. So you might find yourself in tight circumstances. Financially, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Now, we just heard in one of the scriptures a while ago, it just said, all you got to do is cry out to God. Just, you don't have to scream at God. See, when, when, when you understand that the air, just take a breath in. Take some more in. Take some more in. Take some more in. Now, hold it. Now, let all that air out. Push some more out. Push some more out. Push some more out. Do you know who let you do that? Christ your Savior, God. So when he's as close to you as the breath in your very lungs, you don't have to yell at him. You have to scream at him. You have to say, where are you? He's right here. He's right here. We're the ones who feel empty. We're the ones who feel like he's left us. He ain't gone anywhere, baby. He's been with you since you were born. Since before, the Bible says since before, when you were conceived, before your mama even knew she was pregnant with you, he knew you. The Bible says in the dark moments of your life, when you were being formed, he was there brooding and and breathing over you. So when it gets tight in your life, if you can get just enough strength to lift up a hand toward him and just cry out to the Lord. So Mike, just, just raise your hand. It may be tight. See, you have to. Now see, there are times you do that. And, and you, may, you may sense him, but you don't feel him. You may hear him, but he's, he, but he's not, you don't feel like he's delivering you. There are moments, he, there's times in your life, he'll let you stay there because he's teaching you process. He's teaching you how to walk through a tight space. So when he brings you out to a wide open space, see, there'll come a moment and he'll connect with you to the point that you have no doubt. And the Bible says he'll bring you out to a wide open space. And when he does that, when he does that, then Mike's understood he just survived a season that was meant to take him out. It got tied around his neck, it got tied around his heart, it got tied around his head. He couldn't think right, he couldn't couldn't process. But in those tight moments, you learn just to, Cry out to him. It can just be as simple as, oh, God, help me. God, help me. Help me get my sanity back. So it doesn't matter who's walked out on you, what the doctor says about you, what anybody else says about you. Gets tight sometimes. Gets very tight. And you just need to breathe. Sometimes those breaths are really short because you don't have even the capacity to expand your lungs. But once he brings you to a wide open space, then you get a friend by the hand who's going through a tight space. And Mike say, Mike can say now, Hank, let me tell you what I just, what what God, he just delivered me out of. And I can show you how to get to a wide open space. That's why you have to be careful who you hang out with. And see, here's what you do. Now, when it gets tight, you guys get around both of them. This is, this is, the, this is the, 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 the mistake the enemy makes. Because the Bible says where two touch and agree. <laughs> Have y'all agreed? Then get out. Push them away. 
Because the Bible says that one puts what? One puts a thousand to flight. Two, there you go. Thank you guys. He says, the Lord answered me in wide open spaces where I could breathe again, I could think again. So you believe regardless, you overcome the enemy, you overlook people, you magnify Christ, you take the limits off of your life. As believers, we have promises. Let's look at just two or three of them. Let's say this together. My life is in Christ. The old life is gone and everything is new. I don't care what they say about me. I am a new creature. All that junk is gone. I ain't the same girl no more. See, that's your testimony. Here's another one. Say it out loud. Because I commit my actions to the Lord, my plans succeed. I got the raise. I open the business. I got the right marriage partner. My kids ain't crazy no more. See, because you commit your actions to the Lord. When we stop trying to do it ourselves and we submit to his will and let God do his thing in our lives, then you find out what success is. Let's see, here's another nugget I found. Psalm 29, 11, let's say it together. The Lord gives me strength. The Lord blesses me with peace. When they're shooting people in Chattanooga, I have peace. When I don't understand, I have peace. Do you? <clears throat> Do you? So you can just say, when I feel weak, <laughs> he is my strength. When I don't have the answers, he's got it. When I feel like I'm losing my mind, he is my mind. So you got to know where you are and who you are. Here's another one. Look at the first sentence. I don't have to worry about anything. Now, some of y'all worriers didn't kick in on that one. Because if you couldn't worry, you couldn't breathe. Let's say it again. I don't have to worry about anything. Next sentence. I ask God for everything I need. Next one. I praise him for what I have. There's where we fall off the rail sometimes. Right there. You cannot lose sight of what you have. May not be all you want. May not be all that you think you're supposed to have right now. But if you start thanking him for what you have and blessing him. See, when it gets real tight in your life, go outside of your house, outside of your apartment, on your lunch break, and just get out and look at some big old bright blue sky. Walk down your street in your neighborhood and everybody's house you pass that you think has got it so much better than you, just let the Lord open your spiritual eyes while you walk past that house. Now I promise you, you'll come back to yours and say, thank you, God, for the insanity that I live with, that I'm surviving. I'll keep my problems. Because I know those idiots that I live with, and I love them. I can handle my own problems. Just y'all keep your own. The Bible says his peace, let's say it together, his peace stands guard over my thoughts. See, now, we had a great picture of what standing guard looked like on Friday when they were taking David Wyatt's body through this town. There were officers all over this city that were standing guard when he went by, saluting him. The Bible says that the angels of God encamp round about or stand guard around those who fear him. So when you think you're about to lose it, get a picture of his angels just standing guard over you, saluting your life, saying, you can, you got this, you can go far, you got this, baby. This is not a big deal. Breathe. So one of my biggest pieces of advice I ever give anybody, if I get a text message or a phone call, I, my first thing I'll tell you to do is, Stephanie, breathe. 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 Which means chill for just a moment. Back up and assess it. You got this. This is not going to take you under. It's not going to take you out. So his angels stand guard around you, over your home. 
And as, as we've been driving on our highways the last few hours, it's been so inspirational to see people standing in 90 and five, 95 degree weather, 97 degree weather, waving American flags. How much more does heaven wave over your life? They're waving flags of victory, overcoming over your home, over your life, over your job, over your ministry, over everything that you represent. So as, as we have seen this in the physical realm in our city in the last few hours, where Americans from Chattanooga and from all around this region, some from many, many states away, have come here just to pay tribute for those who gave their life for us. How much more should we wave the life flag that we have for a savior who died for us. See the four men, the five people that fell the last few hours, it was senseless. But when Christ gave his life, it wasn't senseless. It was on purpose with a purpose. And that was to set you free from you. He didn't just die so you could escape a hell. He died for a full benefit package so you could think right, live right, do right, process right. He died for the whole package. So we can wave our life flags at him and say, in, in honor of you, sir, because you fell on our behalf, but he rose on our behalf. Talk about a full total package. Here's the last nugget I found. Might want to read all of Psalm 23 this week. It's a pretty powerful scripture. We, we sometimes, you know, learn it when we're little kids and we get, we get past it. But there's a lot of living in this one chapter. There's so much living. You, if, if everything was taken out of the Bible but Psalm 23, it's enough. It's absolutely enough. Let's say it together. This is just parts of it. The Lord is my shepherd. I will always have everything I need. Even if I walk through a valley as dark as the grave, I will not be afraid of any danger because he is with me. He prepares a meal for me in front of my enemies. His goodness and mercy are with me and I will live in his house forever. Wow. Wow. When you let those words sink into the fiber of who you are, Psalm 23 pretty much covers it. It goes on to say, his rod and his staff comfort me. In other words, they discipline me. No matter what I'm walking through, it's as, if it's as dark as a grave, I'm not afraid. Then he just gives you a high five, maybe a high 10. He says, I'm gonna prepare a meal for you right in the front of the people who hate you the most. Watch me do my thing. See, you want, you want revenge, baby? Let God do it. It's so much more fun when he throws that party. You know, it feels good for us to get our revenge. Just watch God. Just, if you just serve him, your enemies will be going, do what? How's that business so blessed? Because <laughs> he is my shepherd and I will always have everything I need. <laughs> have, have, have they eaten so good? See, he says, I will prepare a meal for you and I'll invite your enemies to come watch you be blessed. Mm. And my goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. You're gonna live in my house forever. See, is your house his house? Is your car his car? Is your business his business? Is your school his school? This house is his house. I can promise you that. So when you live in Psalm 23, you can say, whoop. That's what you call a fast thumb. So you can say, 